What's good everyone? Welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we're going to do an explain and review on the Dakota Roche Signature Colt Pedals. Before we go into details and tell you everything about this, we like to tell you that we're doing a contest at 1,000 subscribers and at 5,000 subscribers. So we'll tell you a little bit more about that at the end of the video. Also too, we're going to tell you specs about these and then also where you can buy them from. So let's get to it. So Dakota Roche is a Southern California native. Um, he's grown up in Huntington Beach area and he's basically just killed the street scene. Um, he kind of rides things a little bit different, rides off the walls, um, kind of rides setups that you would never like think to ride and he's got some really big hops so it really helps him out with the with the bicycle maneuvers and stuff like that. So if you know who he is then you know these pedals gotta hold up to some crazy maneuvers and uh, if you got some crazy maneuvers in your bag then these should totally work for you. So um, he was lucky enough to get some signature pedals from Cult Crew. He's been with that brand since they started up about six years ago. Uh, he just continues to make you know, I mean, good products and he just shreds the hell, hell, heck out of bikes. And he basically just, you know what I mean, just makes great products, you know what I mean? And he puts a little bit inside, he knows what riders want, and he just kind of, kind of gives you a little bit more for your, for your money. So um, let's, let's check these out a little bit. So the first thing I notice is that these pedals seem like they have a ton of grip. Um, they have a, have a ton of nerve on them. So uh, definitely any, any pedal with like Neural on them is gonna be really, really grippy. Um, the thing with Neural is it's kind of like a little pyramid or almost little tiny spikes that, that help grip almost any surface. So the, the Neural is completely on these pedals. There's no smooth spots or anything like that where there's no Neural. So that makes it super, super nice. So you know it's gonna grip. Um, it also allows like water or dirt or anything like that to kind of sink into the low parts. So um, when, the, when the water or dirt gets on your pedal, it sinks into the lower spots and then that allows your, your foot to grab it. Um, another, another thing that we notice is that it's got a lot of, lot of pins in it. So if you look at that pedal, it, it has tons of pins in it. And to be honest with you, it looks like they're all in the right spots. And now when I say they're in the right spots, it's basically because I've ridden a lot of pedals and it seems like they tend to just scatter the pins everywhere. But these seem like they're really thought out about. And um, one big feature that I see is that the, the pins aren't right in the center of the pedal. The reason why I think that's so important is because the last thing that you want to do is get a shinner. And that's kind of everybody's fear is to get a shinner. So not having it right there allows, I'm not necessarily going to say it's, it makes it not hurt, but there's l less chance of that pin actually grabbing your shin. So if you see my shins, you'll notice that I have tons of, you know I mean, uh, shinners on there. My whole shins are scarred up. That's because I, I don't like to ride uh, pads because it's more of a mental thing. Um, I tend to, I feel like, hey, you know, if I'm scared to do something, then I probably shouldn't be doing it. So not wearing pads and stuff like that helps me build my mental level on a, on a higher level um, rather than being completely padded up and kind of like you're in a foam pit. BMX is my life. Um, it's a lifestyle for me. So I want to be able to jump on my bike, whether I'm, you know, I mean, hanging out with my friends or anything like that. I don't want to have to go pad up and I don't want to be scared to ride trails or skate park or hit, hit a rail or anything like that because I don't have my pads on. Like the last thing I want is to not ride my bike. So whether I have pads or not, like I'm gonna shred it no matter what. So that is a super cool feature um, because basically your shin isn't a flat surface. It's actually, you know I mean, angled like this. So when it's angled like this, the pedal hits right in the center and you won't actually get a bite on there. You you'll actually might get a little luckier and, and barely graze the, your shin. So that's a super, super cool feature on here. Um, I definitely definitely approve of these because of, because of that reason and then as well as the, the neural all over the pedal. Another cool feature, we've talked about this in the past, is that having pedals with the concave on them and the concave uh, helps uh, your foot basically slide or tend to like stay on the pedal more. 
Um, you got to kind of think of it as like a pyramid. If you're on a pyramid and you go on the side and it's super smooth on the side, you're just going to slide off. But if you're playing inside like a bowl or something, you're going to slide towards the middle and stay on there. So that's the same concept right here. So that makes it super, super cool because your, your foot's going to want to fall in the middle. And then if you say you just land on the side of it and then you try to like shift your foot a little bit, it's going to be easier for your foot to go into the middle. So that's a super, super cool, cool feature. Another thing that I noticed is that if you look at the side of these pedals, they're really, really thin. Um, this is kind of what we talk about all the time is having like a nice pedal that's nice and thin because when it's thinner, what it's doing is lowering your center of gravity. So basically, it doesn't feel like, like you're teeter-tottering very much on your pedal. So if there's a thicker pedal, it seems like it changes the, the pivot point. So instead of being super low, like a, I guess like a race car, you're putting up real high like a, like a tower or something like that, and it allows the tower to, to fall over a little bit easier. I know it's just a little bit, but that little bit definitely like makes a difference. You can definitely feel it from riding a, a flatter pedal compared to like a super, super thick one. So that's another cool feature that, that I see on this and I definitely approve of. So definitely, definitely pretty cool. Um, another little details and stuff like that is that it, it's got the Colt uh, deck like logo on here. So I don't know if you can see it, but it's a really cool subtle engraving right there. It's mainly towards the, towards the, the crank arm. So that little like uh, logo or anything like that, that's not gonna change any of your grip or anything like that because it, it's really hard to get your foot way up in there. And if it does, it's, it's usually gonna be hitting the crank arm before it actually rides on there. So that makes it, makes it pretty cool. And then he also has the, the little Colt eye on the cap right here. So that's definitely, definitely cool looking. So just a little bit, little bit of features that just add to the clean, clean, cleanliness of the pedal and just like the style. So definitely on the outside, this pedal looks really, really sick. Um, the, the next thing we want to kind of talk about is like, is basically the axle and like how they're designed. Um, the, the axles are like the biggest part about a pedal because that's what you're actually riding on. That's what's supporting like everything that you're putting your foot on. And you got to realize that like you're slamming on these things really, really hard. You're dropping off drops. The first thing that takes the impact is going to be your pedals. Second's going to be your, your, your bars. So the pedals having a big, strong spindle on your, your pedals really, really makes a difference. Because the last thing you do, or the last thing you want is for that spindle to bend and even break. So, you know, I mean, Dakota decided to go with like a heavy duty, larger axle. So you can't really see it in here, um, but the axle is really, really big, abnormally big compared to a lot of other pedals. So it has a really large uh, spindle in here to, to support all that. So that, that's another cool feature on it. Um, talking about like the axle being big or small, we get a lot of customers that come in here and they bring in their bike and it's like an old school bike or something like that and they have one piece cranks on it. Um, the problem is is that the one piece cranks it has a lot smaller uh, threading on it. So if you look at this one, this one's a, a lot larger than that one. So if you have one piece uh, cranks, we don't really recommend it. We don't sell anything in our store that, that uh, requires like a, a smaller spindle to fit into the one piece cranks. Um, that's mainly because we're BMX specific, so we want something that's going to hold up. We don't want people coming back and saying, hey, my crank's bent, the spindle's bent, because most of the time when they come in there and they say their pedals are bent, it's not the pedals, it's usually the cranks, and that's because it's just like a chromoly uh, bent, bent bar pretty much. It's pretty much a bent crowbar, and then they have a little bit smaller spindle size. So if you have one piece cranks, you're going to have a half inch as a uh, thread on there and then if you're running three piece cranks which most of the bikes have nowadays I, I don't think I've seen a bike in a long time with one piece cranks on it but the larger size is a 9 16 so half inch for one piece cranks uh, 9 16 for three piece cranks so the three piece cranks are going to have a little bit bigger spindle so that's a, that's another cool thing about all the pedals that we sell and also about this pedal another thing that I noticed on this this spindle is that it's got a six millimeter Allen wrench on the back side. Um, I noticed a lot of people, they don't know which way to turn their, their 
pedals to take them off or to put them on. Um, it kind of confuses them because one side's a, a opposite thread and one's a regular thread. I know there's a saying that says righty tidy lefty loosey on the right pedal. That is completely true. Um, you tighten it up regular threading, but on the left side, it's actually the opposite. So remember that because when you're trying to take it off, you ended up end up turning it the wrong way and you actually tighten it up and then you end up not being able to take off your pedals and you have to take it to the bike shop and the bike shop basically rips it apart real, real easy and then you look like a dummy. So, I mean, super bummed that you pay for, for somebody to rip it off real quick, but knowledge is power, knowledge is money, uh, time is money, so, you know I mean, make sure that you pay attention to that. If not, pay the dudes in the bike shop to take it off because, you know I mean, obviously they know what they're doing and there's a reason why they work there. So definitely remember that. But the key feature that I want to tell you about that is having this six millimeter, millimeter Allen wrench is definitely comes in handy because um, you can actually put an Allen wrench in there if you don't have a pedal wrench. Uh, the pedal wrench is the biggest deal, um, mainly because it gives you a little bit of torque. But the, the fact that you can use an Allen wrench to put your pedals on makes a big, big difference. And if you have like a ratchet with a six millimeter Allen wrench in there, you could put it in the back side and use that to take off the pedal. Another thing too is if your pedal gets stuck like I was saying before, you could actually put a wrench on the outside, pedal wrench and an Allen wrench and use both of those to torque it off. Because a lot of times people put it on here, they turn it the wrong way and they end up stripping out this little nut. Another thing I noticed is this isn't the regular 15 millimeter, you know I mean, um, bolt right here. This is actually a 17, so you could use an open end wrench, and it's a little bit thicker, so you could put an open end wrench, put it in there to, to break it free. So that feature is really, really cool. Um, it makes it a little bit easier for us guys that are do-it-yourselfers. So, you know, I mean, overall, like, you know, I mean, this axle comes in tough. Um, another thing is is that the pedals are unsealed. Um, a lot of people wonder why pe pedals are unsealed nowadays and how come they don't go back to sealed and blah blah blah. The fact is is that the plastic is way lighter than aluminum pedal and you got to realize that you're buying pedals for under 20 bucks with being plastic so compared to like buying an aluminum pedal which is like 50, 60 bucks. So if you really think about it, you have pedals that last a year. Um, you know, I mean, let's say aluminum pedals last you a year. If you break that down into $20 a piece, that means you can get uh, new pedal pedals every four months so that you'll have brand new grip and the pedals will be lighter. So when you complain about pedals being expensive or, you know, I mean, not expensive, but under $20 is amazing to have some, some awesomely designed pedals. So. Definitely think about that. It, it's definitely a cool feature that, that these things are plastic and you can swap them out. You can change colors very easily for under 20 bucks. So that's, that's really, really cool that BMX brands are doing that. And then also too, these are unsealed. And you know what I mean? Being unsealed, it makes it a lot cheaper. Back in the day, we did sealed pedals and stuff like that. But the problem is, is that they tend to get a lot of side shake. And that's because when you're 316 or you're 180 or you're landing double peg, you're actually sliding on this and you're beating the hell out of the, the bearings going sideways. And sealed bearings, they're only good for loads up and down. So when you hit them sideways, those bearings blow out. So the pedals tend to get damaged a lot faster. Having sealed bearings or unsealed bearings, it's actually a lot stronger from side to side load because they got a race that's sitting there and the ball bearings are hitting it. And you tend to have more ball bearings inside an unsealed pedal than having a sealed one because uh, the, un the sealed bearings are spaced more because they have a retainer in there that holds them all in there. Now as an unsealed bearing, there's no race and the ball bearings are actually riding against each other. So you could actually fit like one or two more bearings in there. And what that does is it, it rides against the race and has more support. So instead of having, you know, I mean, eight legs, you're, you now have 10 legs that are actually like holding it up. So it makes it, makes it real, real cool um, to, to have that kind of technology and to kind of understand that. So the unsealed ones are, are definitely uh, a lot stronger side to side low. So being unsealed makes it cheap, 
uh, makes it stronger. And the cool thing is, is that when you're done with them or you thrash them up, grind them down a little bit, you can toss them out and buy a new set for only a few bucks. So it makes it super, super cool. So uh, overall, these, these Dakota Roach pedals are, are super, super sick. We definitely suggest you to buy some of these and you can pick them up at our website. Um, our website is stackbmx.com and pretty much any pedals on there fit any crank system. Any crank system fits any of these pedals. Any of the bikes that we sell online fit these pedals, vice versa. So if you buy a bike from us online, you can go through any of the pedals, buy the colors that you want, you know what I mean? Get it shipped to your house. Instead of putting the stock pedals on, you can grab these pedals, slap them on your bike, and have a, a super sick aftermarket you know I mean, part on your bike, and you can upgrade very, very easy. Um, I know it's pretty hard to, to buy stuff. Um, you know, I mean, you guys are kids, you guys don't have jobs, you guys don't understand the, you know I mean, how much things cost, you know what I mean? So, you know, here at the shop, we'd like to give you guys a way to get some free stuff and to help you out without spending any money. So what we decided to do is we decided to get some of our subscribers and the people that follow us and the people that are, interact with our YouTube channel a way to win some free stuff by simply subscribing to our channel. So when we hit a thousand subscribers, we're going to give away a free parts package from a bunch of the brands that we carry here in the store. And then at 5,000 subscribers, we're going to give away a free bicycle retail value at $300 and ship it to you free of charge um, for just basically subscribing to our channel and then doing a few little things. So we want you to, to comment on it, uh, our videos below, let other people know why they should uh, subscribe to our channel. And then we also want you to like this video because obviously we want you to like our videos. So definitely like our videos. And then um, also I want you to turn on your notification bells. So every time we get a new, uh, we drop a new video, you guys can see it pop up and then you can go and make a comment and stuff like that. And then also too, we want you to share the video. That's going to be a, a big thing is if you share it, um, it'll allow us to get more subscribers. And what, the, what that does for you is it helps you get the free stuff faster. So the more subscribers that we have, the, more, the faster we can get you the stuff. So um, what we're going to basically do is we're going to scroll through our videos and basically randomly pick one. And then from there, we're going to go through the comments and we're going to randomly select uh, somebody on there that, that posted their comments or whatever and see if we like their comment and then what we'll do is we'll check to see how interactive they are and stuff like that and we're, if we're really hyped on that person we're gonna select you to be one of the winners so I mean definitely help us out definitely give us some feedback let us know what you liked about this video let us know what you didn't like about this video let us know what you want to see in the future you know I mean let us know anything that's on your mind and basically help us make our YouTube channel better because we're new we're young and we're gonna do a video every single day and we want you to be part of the shop so definitely thank you very much for commenting below and turn on your notification bells and supporting stack BMX we appreciate you guys and we'll see you tomorrow.